There are 4.6 billion people in the world right now that you and I can communicate with about the gospel of Jesus Christ. No longer are we confined by only speaking with those who live near to either us or our local churches. No longer are we confined geographically. But instead, this post-pandemic reality has presented our church with the greatest opportunity of fulfilling the Great Commission in our lifetime, in our generation. How people and organizations communicate has radically altered more in the last 10 years than in the previous century through the explosion of social networks, through the ever-reliance on smartphones. Now we can communicate in a greater capacity than at any point in Earth's history up until now. It presents our church with this opportunity of pushing our limits and speaking and communicating with a wider audience. So what is digital evangelism? Digital evangelism, simply put, is the opportunity of communicating the gospel of Jesus through digital media. Now, we can do this in different ways. You can do that through social media, whether it's um, through Facebook or Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or some other social platform. We can communicate the gospel through blogs or email, some other type of written content. We can communicate the gospel through podcasts and other audio content. We can communicate the gospel in video, whether it's live or pre-recorded, whether we're on Facebook Live or, or YouTube Live, or whether it's through Zoom or some other social platform like that. This change of landscape, how we communicate has, has radically altered traditional media. And the opportunities that we have today, both personally and collectively as a family of believers is, is radically different. Now, there's a couple of things I want to share with you as a local church, what you can do digitally to evangelize in your area or, or to evangelize what you are doing as a local church to those who may be interested in it. The first is through your local church website. Now, some of our churches in the NEC have a website, some of them don't. Now, there are a couple of ways to go about getting your own website. The first is you can take the responsibility of developing the, the entire website yourself. Now, you may have somebody in your church who knows how to use WordPress or Joomla or some other platform, and you can develop and build your own website that you manage and maintain. The cost, naturally, you would concur yourself. The second option is through the conference can provide you a free website. Now it's a template website, so it'll look visually at least very similar to everybody else's, but you can personalize it and tailor it to your own needs. So you add in your own local church address, um, service times and other information you can put on your website about upcoming events that are taking place. You can share information about your own church leaders on there. You can, you'll have access to the back end of that website and you can make those changes yourself and manage it yourself and it's free of charge. The second opportunity you have is through social media. Now, some of our churches already have a social media account, whether that's on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or some other platform. Now, the key to having social media, there are a couple of, there are a couple of just ABCs, a couple of real basics that you really need to get a hold of. And the first is consistency. Now, whether you post once a week, twice a week, or once every two weeks, whatever your rhythm is or your pattern is, stick to that pattern. Keep that rhythm, keep that consistency going. A huge variable when it comes to social algorithms is this consistency. You'll be able to grow your platform and reach a greater audience when you are consistently posting whatever that rhythm may look like for your local church. Now, the second is don't buy it off more than you can chew. You don't want to be having four or five social platforms and struggle to maintain them. And there's a lot of work that goes into maintaining a quality social platform. So instead of having maybe three, four or five accounts, maybe just have one, maybe just have two and just really prioritize and focus on those accounts. It's better to do less, but to a higher standard. So let me encourage you to explore these opportunities or if you already have those social accounts, make sure they're kept up to date. Now, there's some really exciting opportunity, opportunities that I want to share with you that impact both you personally, but also us as a body of believers, us as a family, us as a church. On the 10th of July, the North England Conference is launching its media center. Now, it's been in the pipeline. It's been in development for some time, and COVID and, and one or two other challenges have slowed things down a little bit. But come the 10th of July, it's being launched. 
It's based in Birmingham, just around the corner from Camp Hill. So if you're around or you want to travel in and you've, because you've got a passion for media, uh, come and join us at Camp Hill Church, 10 a.m. for the dedicatory service. After the service, we're going to come to the media center and you'll be able to have a look around the facilities and become familiar with what we've got here. Now, it's a great place. On the ground floor, you've got a couple of radio rooms for Hope FM. So whether you've been a presenter in the past on a Hope FM, or maybe you haven't and you want to get into it, there are a couple of great facilities, great rooms, great spaces down there for you to be able to present something on that platform and really share the gospel through radio. On the first floor, you've got the main studio room, a larger studio room that's sound dampened, and it's a great space to be able to film content, to be able to record audio, whether it's, whether it's a group of singers, uh, whether it's a podcast or some other type of content. Now, by the grace of God in the coming months and years, we'll be able to continue to invest in this place and, and grow the, uh, the, the equipment that we have here. But already right now, we, we've got new cameras and new microphones and new lighting gear. And, and hopefully in the coming weeks and months, there'll be a development of different sets for different types of video content that we create. And, and the possibilities of using this space are just endless. The only limitation is really people. Is really just people, but we know that's always been a challenge because Jesus encouraged us to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send out more laborers. And so whether you've got a passion for audio content, creating audio content or creating video content, whether you're a social media person, you've got a few hundred followers and you really understand the mechanics of how social media works and you understand the, the, the algorithms and the rhythm of it all and you want to you know, take that to another level, let's have a conversation. If you're interested in starting a podcast or you want to create maybe a six to eight short series, uh, eight, a six to eight episode series for YouTube, there's so many opportunities to be able to use this space. And it will be great to be able to have a conversation with you and see how we together can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in your local church, you've got a communications department. And that person is responsible or persons are responsible for putting together your local church bulletin, maybe putting the lyrics on the screens or, and doing these other similar types of tasks. But the truth is all of us are called to serve in God's communication department. Now you step out of your house in the morning and as a Christian you carry the name of Jesus Christ on you. And so as you interact with your neighbors, your friends, your work colleagues, your family, when you interact with them you are saying you are communicating something not only about your character and your personality but also about the character of Jesus. Now when you help that single mother who's struggling with her children, when you help that person who's sleeping rough on the streets, when you help other individuals, that communicates something about your God. When instead you treat somebody poorly or you say something harsh or brash to them or, or it, you, you, you do something else that isn't positive, that also communicates something about the God that you serve. The truth is in the North England Conference, our communications department is about 12,000 people strong. And I love to be able to see how together, collectively, pooling our resources, our time, our skills, and our spiritual gifts, how we can pull these together and communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ in a greater way than we've ever been able to do. May you pray for our church as we engage digitally with people. And as we share the gospel in that space, the key is never to swing from one extreme to another. It's not just digital and it's not just in person, but how can we bring these two worlds together and comprehensively share Jesus and save souls for the kingdom? God bless.